3D printing technology really continues to inspire and to amaze me. Today on That Techo Guy, I'll be showing you how to fully 3D print and assemble a mini bow called the Sliding Legolini. This is free to download and it's really great and fun and also it does pack quite a bit of punch indeed. Before I go any further, below this video there's a big red button with the word subscribe on it. Please click that button and help support my channel and thank you for your support. Now it's on to the video. All 13 parts are 3D printed in PLA with 30% infill at 0.2mm resolution and no supports are required. It is important to follow the PDF document in the link below for the orientation for 3D printing the parts. An assortment of M3 and M4 nuts and bolts are required to put the pieces together and three springs are also required. The main body parts need to be properly sanded and filed to be smoothed. I am using 240 grit sandpaper and a round file for the channel where the arrow will travel in. The inside of the barrel also needs to be filed with a round file to get rid of the integrated supports on the channel inside and it will look like this. A flat file is used to continue smoothing it further and to get rid of any rough surfaces inside. The channel on the back part of the main body is also filed with a round file to smooth it. And the same is done with a round file on the top main body channel. Any edges that need to slide in a channel are smoothed with a flat file. I then dry fit the main front and back body parts together to make sure that they fit properly and that the channel looks to be aligned correctly. And slid in the top main body part all the way to make sure that it fit in nicely. Once satisfied with the fit and alignment of these parts, I applied Gorilla Gel Glue although a two-part epoxy can be used as well, but will take longer to dry. The parts are then fitted together permanently and I made sure that they were level and that the channel in the center was flush. The top parts were next and I put the glue where required. Glue was also applied at the end parts of this piece and they were secured with pegs until they dried. That concludes the assembly of the main body part, however, I also decided to fill in the small gaps where the piece is joined with some filler hardener, since I will be spraying these parts later. Once that was dry, I sanded and filed it smooth from the bottom and the sides. Since the only available colour filament I had was white at the time, I decided to spray paint the parts a different colour to make the bow look better. First I applied a single coat of primer over all the parts. It's important to spray from a distance of around 30 cm in a well ventilated room or outdoors and to wear a ventilation mask due to fumes and keep the motion flowing so that the applied coat is not too thick. For the grip, main body, trigger and arrow holder mechanism, I decided to go for a metallic silver finish look even though fingerprints would be apparent on this later on but it looks nice overall. For the sliding handle part and the bow parts that would fit together, I went for black, which really looks good for this. And this was the final result. I then proceeded to painting the sliding Legolini word grey with some acrylic paint. This would make it stand out more and it can be read better. Once dry, I wiped off any excess paint with a damp cloth and then dried it with a dry cloth and the result looked good. But then I dotted the eyes with some red acrylic paint and gave it a final wipe and there you go. Next I inserted some M3 nuts with the help of an M3 bolt to push them in. Nine M3 nuts are needed for this part. I then placed the two corresponding parts on top of each other and make sure they fit correctly in the grooves and then inserted M3 by 20mm bolts from the other end to secure them together. 
Here I had to make the holes for the bolt heads a bit wider so they could fit properly and reach the nut on the other side. And I then used some cheap black nail varnish to cover the white color exposed that the wider hole made and also to color the bolts and nuts so everything was the same color. Next I used some multi-purpose grease on the main body, front flat 45 degree angle sides and on the bow parts where the sliding action would take place in order to reduce the friction between surfaces. The main body is inserted under the right side bow part previously assembled and the left side is placed on top and secured into place with M3 by 20 mm bolts and nuts. Again, the bolts are painted with a cheap black nail varnish. The sliding action is then tested out all the way along the body and it feels good and smooth. Now it's time to assemble the handle grip. M3 nuts are gently hammered into their holes with a rubber mallet. A 2cm long spring is inserted into its slot as shown and the trigger is placed underneath. The other half of the grip is then placed on top to hold everything down in place. M3x20mm bolts are then passed through to the nuts to secure the parts together. The handle grip is inserted to the main body from the trigger part and slotted into place from the top part with two M3 20mm bolts passing through the main body to secure it in place and then an M4 nut and M4 40mm bolt passing through the main body and trigger part which will secure everything together and allow the trigger to function properly with its spring action as shown. The arrow holder mechanism assembly is next. A spring is placed in the middle of the main body with one of the black clips at the bottom secured with an M3 16mm bolt. The other black clip is pressed against the spring and secured in place with the other M3 16mm bolt and the result is two black clips that can open and close when pressed as shown. Two M3 nuts are then inserted in the main body and another spring is placed in the center of the main body. The arm part is pushed against the spring in its slot and secured in place with the M3 20mm bolt. It is then tested to see that it springs back. This arm will hold the arrows in place when loaded. The main body of the mechanism is placed on the bow main body and locked into place with the two black clips. It is then secured with an M3 20mm bolt to the bow. When the clips are pressed together, the mechanism is opened so that the arrows can be loaded and when closed, they are kept securely in place and pushed down slightly with the arm and spring tension. Now it's time to cut the rope lengths. I am using 3mm rope diameter and we need one piece of 20cm long rope and two pieces of 15cm long rope. For the TheraBand, I am using a resistance band that I purchased from a local sports shop and cut off the handles and then cut the rubber to size. We need two pieces of around 7cm each. I then proceeded to remove the hooks from the bow printed part. I had to first cut through the first printed layer to free it further and then use the screwdriver to break it free. If you accidentally break this part, you can print just the hooks included as one of the STL files. Prepare all the items required next as shown. I am using 4.6mm wide cable ties which work fine. Make a loop and knot with the rope. For the 3mm rope a double loop is recommended, however mine worked fine with a single loop. To keep the knot even more secure, carefully burn the end of the rope before the loop so that the knot will not be able to slip out. This is done for all three ropes. The shorter 15cm rope is pushed and pulled through the hook part hole as shown. This is also done for the other hook as well. The hook is clipped on the bow arm temporarily so that rope length adjustments can be made. From the end of the knot to the bow arm, there needs to be around 1.5 centimeters 
and a knot is made on the other end and that knot at the top of the hook is pushed in the hole. Access rope is cut and again the end is melted carefully to help keep the knot secure. The hooks are removed from the bow arm and a few more cable ties, the TheraBand tubes and the 20cm rope are prepared. The knotted end of one of the 15cm rope knots is inserted 1cm deep into the TheraBand tube to allow space for the cable tie which is then securely tightened as shown. The access of the zip tie is cut. On the other end of the TheraBand tube, the knot end of the 20cm rope is inserted into the tube again at around 1cm deep and secured with a cable tie as before. On the 20cm rope that will be sliding inside the bow when loading and releasing repetitively, I put a piece of 5cm heat shrink to protect the rope from wear and tear. The rope is then fed through the main body of the bow in the slot and pulled out the other end. Make sure the correct hook shape is on the correct side of the bow where it will hook up to. A knot is then tied on the other end of the 20cm rope and space between the bow body and the knot needs to be 1cm as shown. The access rope is cut and the end melted like with the other ropes. The other 15cm rope hook prepared earlier is attached to the 20cm line as done with the previous hook rope and this is the result when done. The hooks are then stretched up to the bow arm and clipped into place on each side. Now ready to test the sliding mechanism with the therabands and trigger release, which seems fine. Since I did not have proper arrows or bolts to fire with, I found some good 3D printed arrows that I printed in PLA at 60% infill and work fine. The link for these arrows are in the description below. Open the loading mechanism by pressing the two black clips and insert the arrows. You can print an optional magazine included with the STL files to load six arrows all at once faster, but this way is also fine. Close the loading mechanism again and make sure it is secure. Now it's time for the fun part. I set up a 5cm thick polystyrene board and drew a small circle target on it to test this out. I had already practiced on this board as you can see from the holes. Here I am going to test this from around 5 meters away from target. Be sure to be careful when using the mini bow and do not point it at any person when firing, even with plastic arrows. Quite powerful, and not bad aiming considering I didn't have a laser sight yet. The arrows really went through the polystyrene well and seemed robust enough to handle the speed and force on impact. This is great fun, and it is all achieved with 3D printing technology, well except for some springs, nuts and bolts. Hats off to the designer for this great invention and for sharing the files. Please subscribe to my channel for more awesome tech projects and thanks for watching.